Um, all right, so content and skills. What can be flipped? Well, it's just pretty much everything. Uh, you can flip your grammar, your vocab, the reading, and the writing. And a couple of tools I want to highlight. Um, there are, for flipping grammar and vocabulary, uh, Grammar Flip is an easy, flight, uh, easy site that has multiple um, uh, lessons, video lessons, and then uh, multiple choice questions that folks can take a look at. Um, and then you have No Red Ink. Uh, Mr. Carippo's Eight Parts is a lesson design that uh, I've modified, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then Kahoot! Who doesn't love Kahoot? Right? Have you all heard of Kahoot? Yes. yes. Oh, goody. Um, all right. So Grammar Flip is free, created by a teacher. It's mastery learning of grammar concepts. You can make this like a station uh, if you're using Kat Catlin Tucker's um, station rotation model. And students can do this, and you can just check their understandings with follow-up quizzes. Um, this is what it looks like on the screen. It's a very simple design, so um, it's not anything that's too cumbersome and, and requires a lot of work. I know he is redesigning the site, so and that's also something, too, with any tech tool you use. Just be ready for any changes and any updates that they may make, and just roll with it. It's okay. Um, no red ink. red ink. You got the premium. You got the free side for it. Um, again, with grammar lessons, it's adaptive technology, so it's a little bit more enhanced. You can also select which lessons you want to give, what content you want to give to the students. So this one, um, again, you can make this one also a station, too. You can make this also kind of homework, um, but be mindful of any digital work that you give your students, depending on your access to technology. Uh, I only have a cart in my classroom, and um, my students are BYOD, and then we have common spaces like the library that they can go to during study hall. So I never give a digital assignment today and make it due tomorrow. I always build in enough time that they can schedule their time to get to uh, a library or um, you know to the lab during study hall or after school because I don't I want to be fair and equitable and I can't punish those students at home that don't have access so I make sure I just build that time in so uh, pretty easy to use with no red ink and if you don't have a computer well you can go paper give students a list and just make it part of your routine to trade papers and look for specific errors uh, Membean, my buddy Natalie Stotes up in Maine, she uses Membean for online vocabulary instruction. Uh, she's amazing with what she does with it. Uh, she will check, um, track their progress on paper, um, and that's a really good tool, but it is subscription-based, so it's not free. And then uh, Mr. Crippo's eight parts, I've adapted it. And what you do is you use images to teach the eight parts of speech as well as research writing. So you give students a picture. They have to identify eight, you know, examples of the eight parts of speech within the picture. Then you ask them to write an example of figurative language based on the picture. And then the piece that I've added to this is I'll use real photographs that I found online. And I'll ask ask students to do a reverse Google image search and go find that picture and then find information about it. Um, and then they'll write a paragraph or a narrative scene using all of the um, eight parts of speech examples, the figurative language, and the research. And this was some of the best writing I got from my students. So uh, we took this picture, which um, my students, many of them were like, Hey, is that Amelia Earhart's plane? I'm like, um, no. <laughs> and uh, it actually, you know, they start shouting out where it came from, and they're saying the Pacific, they're saying the Atlantic. And I said, well, let's go find the picture and let's take a look. That plane actually came out of Lake Michigan. Um, it's an FM Wildcat. And uh, my students, in five minutes, curated all of this research that we were able to create a plot diagram of that plane that's featured in that image, that it took off from a training uh, mission in Lake Michigan. Uh, for, they found the name of the, the ship that it took off from. It had engine failure. It crashed. It, they found the name of the pilot, that it was on the bottom of the uh, lake for 70 years. They found it, recovered it, and then restored it to Florida. Um, and this was really fascinating. This worked really well with my lower level students. 
they were so excited to do research and to go find this. And then the writing that they did afterwards, based on this, I asked them to pick like a part on the plot diagram to write about um, and to turn into a narrative scene. It was fantastic. It was the best writing I got from them all year long. And then I have a rubric that uh, will help to score their work. You can have them do revision. I'll have them write it on paper first, um, use the worksheet, write it on paper, and then have them um, type up on a Google Doc their assignment. And it's all like, we just covered grammar and they didn't even know it, which is pretty cool. Uh, Kahoot, you could also then follow up with all of that instruction with uh, Kahoot review games that you know, you're making or your students are making um, and then quizzing each other and even doing like a Kahoot tournament where they face off against each other, which is a heck of a lot of fun. I play that music on the day that we're going to do a Kahoot and you should see the students like run down the hall to get to the room. They're like, we're playing Kahoot today. I don't know, they get so excited about it. There are some other tools like uh, GoFormative and Quizzes, which are also um, more involved um, than Kahoot for um, quizzing information in class. So, all right. Um, and then some bonuses. You got Grammarly, which is a great website um, in Chrome extension. There is a free side and a paid side, but you could have students install the Chrome extension, and then when they're typing information in groups, uh, say like in Edmodo, it will check their work for them before they actually post it. So just an idea for, you know, trying to build in the writing revision stuff throughout the entire uh, time in your classroom, that it's not just, you know, you at the front of the room giving them a grammar lesson or you line editing their work. And then also think about how you can flip ELA assessments, like, you know, have the students write the test, um, give them the option to show what they know with like a choice board, um, do peer and self-evaluation, and even like, heck, what if you ungraded projects and instead had them keep revising until they were able to be published online? And you created your own, say, classroom website where you can publish stuff. Um, and there's links and resources, and you can, I got blog posts about any of it and all of this stuff if you want to follow up later with this. Okay, and then if you want to do gamify flip, has anybody heard of gamification? Give me a yes or a no, so I know there's people still in the room. Yes. How many yeses is written in? Okay, we're a mixed bag. Yeah, we're on right. Okay, so what you do is you organize the content into stages. And this is a lot like mastery flip, but it's got this spin on it of like video game, like, oh, you level up to the next stage once you've mastered something. Um, this can be a lot of fun, but it can also be uh, very cumbersome to set up and design. Uh, Class Craft is a great website if you're really interested in this, um, to go this route. And I've also gamified it using Edmodo, but it does take a lot of setup ahead of time. Um, and just something to think about if you're interested in gamifying a unit. And this is the Odyssey that I gamified. You can see I've organized it into small groups by topics, and then students went to each group, and they um, completed the task. I got a video here that walks you through it, but we don't need to worry.